once you uh, come into mydbsync.com, uh, you know you can go to my account, log into your dbsync account. Uh, you'll be provided with the login information once you subscribe for uh, any of our connectors. Post that. Once I log into my dbsync account, um, it'll be re it'll redirect me to uh, my homepage. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go to uh, my home and click on Development Studio, which will navigate me to uh, the IDE-like environment where uh, all the mappings um, or you know um, solution can be built. So as soon as you would log in, you'll see three main components. Uh, now you have projects, you have functions, and you have template library. So a project can be viewed as a, a configuration between the two systems on how the data shall flow. Once I click on a project, you can, as you can see, um, there are a few. Uh, it branches out with, uh, you know, with several other components. I'm going to go to connectors, um, as one would imagine. You have Salesforce and NetSuite as one of the connectors. Um, if I were to go to Salesforce, uh, you have a couple of ways to authenticate your Salesforce login. One is you can put in your username and password, and you also have the option of validating the connection. Or you could quickly you know, use the um, quick setup or the OAuth authentication, where it will navigate, um, it will open up a pop-up window um, of the kind. There we go. So if I were to say connect to Salesforce, uh, you can log in um, to your instance or Salesforce org. And once you're done, uh, this is the most more preferred way. You can point it to a sandbox instance production or you know if there's any custom URL associated with your Salesforce or so once you know post um, you know login you can click on validate connection so this will ensure uh, your connector settings are validated I'm going to know NetSuite so as you can see some of the parameters associated with NetSuite you put in your company ID username and password uh, once you're through with that uh, you're going to hit the save to ensure all the credentials are saved and you can click on validate connector so if everything um, is good, so you'll get a message um, or you know the validate button turning green saying the connector is validated and, and we're good to go. So as you can see, uh, initial validation usually takes time uh, because it goes through, it also depends on your network as well. So once uh, your connector is validated, you would get a message saying successfully validated. Uh, next, I'm going to move on. Now, the next component I'm going to focus on is all the processes. So every process, um, a process can have a, a bunch of workflows. Um, so we're going to see how the what what these workflows are, or what es essentially they do. A typical workflow. So as you can see, the naming convention that you see is it, also sort of gives you an indication of how the data is moving. So uh, here I'm, I'm initiating the process or the one of the workflows that I'm trying to or, or the workflows is trying to do is push data from Salesforce account into NetSuite customers. So once you identify what's an equivalent of a Salesforce account or what's equivalent of a Salesforce or a NetSuite customer, you go ahead with the mapping and then you uh, sequence out these jobs accordingly. If you are carrying out integration or of, of sales invoices or sales orders, you got to ensure the uh, the customer and the item SKU is always existing on the other end. So this is uh, one way of ensuring uh, you know, uh, by sequencing out, out these uh, different jobs. Um, we're going to see how, um, um, you know, data stacked up in Salesforce can be sort of pushed into NetSuite uh, with the click of a button. To begin with, here's a typical opportunity. Uh, we, uh, in a case, should be taken to make sure uh, that at least there's one line item or one opportunity product against it. So we have two of them here. So. A couple of couple of ways to initiate the integration. One is, uh, of course, via the Run Now button, and the other one is also through our scheduler. So I'd like to take uh, sort of talk about the scheduler. So as you can see, um, once you have these processes defined in a project, if you go to the scheduler um, um, menu, you'll get those processes listed out here. So you can configure it, you know, when it should be started. What should be the interval, uh, the schedule, uh, the scheduler interval or time interval? You could run it uh, every minutes, uh, depending on the uh, amount of data that we're trying to push, or the use case we're trying to automate. Uh, we configure these accordingly. Let's say I'm going to run it every 10 minutes, 
as you can see, uh, the scheduler job is added. So in case you know if, if you log into DBSync, if there's a job running, it also shows you the status uh, if, uh, if, a, if a job is being run or not. So I'm going to delete the scheduler for now. I'm going to sort of invoke the integration manually. So I would come into processes and I would hit run now. So it's going to execute all the workflows which are active. Uh, not necessarily the uh, the inactive ones. Again, you can activate or inactivate a certain workflow by clicking on these uh, on and off buttons. So I'm going to click on now, well, run now. As you can see, the process is initiated. So it's going to start um, uh, retrieving records from Salesforce, um, and it's going to uh, by execute these jobs sequentially. Uh, once the integration is complete or completed you'll see a message throw up in the console or you can also go to our logs so sort of view um, all of these workflows getting executed one by one um, and it's going to show up in, in our dbsync logs also accordingly there we go so it's going to it's currently it says the status as running so once the sync is uh, uh, or the integration is completed you can look through uh, the dbsync log viewer to see all the processes that got executed and also all the data, what was the request sent from Salesforce and what is the response you, you received uh, from NetSuite. So uh, if, you're, if you are to see uh, the Salesforce data, for example, the account, uh, you know, getting that is getting created in NetSuite, um, you can check for the account if the account has been translated as a customer data in NetSuite. So I'm going to go to list, there's relationships and customers. There we go. We do have Oracle Finances that has just come in. Um, and if I were to go to Salesforce account, which is Oracle Finances, you can see all the attributes of uh, the Salesforce account details. That is the bill to ship to phone numbers and fax number has come into NetSuite um, exactly the way they're configured. Mm -hmm.